Today we're going to show you how to add the easiest sunflowers you've ever painted in your life um, and we're going to show you how to do these pops of color and make an awesome project. I'm super excited. We are going to paint using the cowhide technique that we used in the previous video. We will link that for you so that you can find it and it's an amazing technique. We're going to use sunflowers with our cowhide. And just because our stencil is this big doesn't mean I need to use that whole stencil in any one place. I don't have to line it up with anything. I can have part of it flopping off on the other, on the other side. So I want this to be a smaller amount and this to be a heavier amount just to weight the bottom. That's kind of a little design technique. I want a little bit of the brown centers and I want the leaves to fall off the edge and then I want some of that leaf or the yellow leaf petals. I'm going to tape in two places because if I tape in only one place, then my stencil will move. Okay, so I want to make sure to tape in two places and I can tape across any old part of that stencil. It doesn't have to be on the edge. Okay, so we know that we're gonna do brown in here, so we are going to start with our brown, and we're gonna do brown and black. Let me get my black out. We're using acrylic paints. Um, we buy our paint in bulk, and then we put it in these honey bottles, and we can put a, a link in the description for that. Gonna go into the brown. This is a multi-masker. This is a masking tool where I've got these um, petals right here. I don't want to get the brown on the petals, so I am masking them with the multi-masker. This is something that we invented. Um, one day I was painting and used a little piece of this, and then we've made this into a very organic shape um, with a straight edge. It's got a ruler on the bottom. It has um, banding thing or squares to make a pattern, dots. It has jagged edges. He looks like he's laughing and that's his nose. I, he always makes me chuckle. Okay, so we're gonna mask that and then just stipple this color. Then we pick the mask up, wipe off the back, and then move it around. We have a truck that has been one of our best sellers and it is a pain to mask. And because you tape and you tape and you tape, these little multi-maskers do a brilliant job of masking that. Okay, so we've got that with some brown. We're gonna go into our black just a little bit and pounce off on the paper towel. And then while this is wet, we'll make it be a little bit dark on the inside then maybe just a little bit more. Okay, brush goes in the water, and now we're into our yellow. Actually, I think I'm gonna move up to my green because my yellow is right next to that brown and I'd have to mask on that and it's still wet. So we'll go up there. Because I have um, this darker color up there, I'm gonna use a color of green that is super, got some um, toning in it. So it's got some white paint in it. And we're gonna shake that up. Always shake your paint because the good stuff always settles to the bottom. And I noticed um, a trend with myself. I noticed I am putting out way more paint than I need. Um, I put out that much paint for me to do two centers. Um, you probably only ever need about a dime size of paint. And if you need more, you can pour it out, but then you're not wasting. Okay, so we're gonna go into a new dome brush. If you don't like to um, bleed under when you're stenciling, nobody likes that, then you wanna use a dome brush. The dome brush is cut in all the directions so that it is domed everywhere. And then that means that when you hit this part of your brush, it doesn't splay out like a flat brush. So it doesn't push underneath the edges of your stencil. So this brush is brilliant for not bleeding under your stencils. And then you offload your paint onto your paper towel. And when you're offloading the paint, that is what keeps between the shape of the brush and offloading, that's what stops the bleeding under. So we'll go on here, pick up our green, and then we'll offload, I'll put it on camera for you. 
maybe 10, 15 times, a little circle, a little washy wash there. Um, you just want it to be light and light coats dry faster. So you'll notice that you can paint and finish a project really quickly because you're not um, blobbing on the paint. All right, so we'll go here, find what part of this will mask. When I have little tight spaces, I tend to stipple, but mostly we swirl. So now that I'm away from everything, I can swirl. Now I'm noticing that my paint is lifting off as fast as it's putting it on. Um, so I'm gonna need to do two coats. And this right here is very dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and stipple that because it'll be a stronger color. I don't want freckles on my leaves. Okay, and then we'll let that dry. We have that dry. And so while I have this brush dirty, I'll go ahead, pick up a paint, pick up some paint, go over here and give it one more little scumble. Swirl, swirl, swirl. And I'm getting a little bit in here. So I'll get out my masker. And then we'll get into a darker paint. This is like a black green kind of color. And we're gonna do a little dirty brush mixing. Ooh. So I'll pick up my darker color in a dirty brush, wipe it off. And you can see that it went from this dark to this kind of medium because it's mixing those two. So this way I don't have to have a separate brush for a separate color. So we'll go in here with our masker. And just at the base of the leaves. And then I don't know about you if you're a peeker or not, but I'm gonna peek. So that's a little bit strong for me. I think that um, it's a good color, but it's just a little bit strong. So I'm gonna get out some cream color. I'm gonna wipe my brush out. I'm gonna pick up the cream color. And I'm looking for something lighter than this. So I've got something lighter than that, maybe one more time. If you see hairs, every now and again, you get a random hair. Um, if you see hairs, just Wipe them off. Oops, not wiped enough. So we'll back that back in from the tips of the leaves. And now we'll peek again. So that softened that back down just a little bit so a little bit fades. And I might need one more just to soften it back. Just feather dusting it. And now that to me lays back just nicely. So that brush goes in the water. We get out a new brush and brush away anything we don't want there. And now we're gonna go into our yellow. So our yellow, we're gonna start with a yellow that has some white in it. So this has got, you can see that it has a creaminess to it. And that means that it's going to cover really well. Shake it up, little dab of do ya. Turn my paper towel over. What I want this color for is I want it to coat these um, dark places. So I wanna go ahead and use the masker here. And I'll use the masker here. And then I'll try to stay out of Rusty's way. We'll go here and stipple over the darkest areas. And we'll set that down. Uh, 
Um, we have put adhesive on the back of some of these and that's really handy for keeping them stuck down so you don't have to, you know, do contortions with your fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a second coat. And then we'll give it a blow dry. All right, we're gonna switch to a brighter yellow and we're gonna go one step brighter with like electric yellow. And then probably into some white. So I'm gonna neutralize this color in my brush by picking up that color, wiping it off, picking it up again, wiping it off. And we'll go here. And this is the color we want our sunflower to be. Ta-da. Okay, and that's gonna go in the water. We could save that in a plastic bag um, for painting the other one. I have a lot of these dome brushes. If you don't have a lot, then a piece of plastic wrap or whatever, and then you just twist it around your brush so that the air doesn't oxidize the paint, which is what makes it dry. I never knew that from 20 years of painting and now I know it. Okay, so we're going to pull this away. And that's our little sunflower. And I feel like that's a nice um, look. I don't like this negative space right here. So I'm actually gonna lay over, after I dry, I'm gonna lay over a little bit of greenery and get a couple more fronds of green going in there. Okay, but I like, I like the balance of it. So that's doing good. In the meantime, I'm gonna take a round brush Got a number three round brush. Our website has, we're studior12.com. Our website has some of the best brushes. I've curated them myself over 30 years of painting and I have to say they work. Um, I won't accept a brush that does not work. So um, know that we've got the brushes. So we'll go here and we'll pick up our brown with a little bit of water. And when you use your round brush, you're going to balance on your tippy toe like a ballerina. Okay, so we're gonna bring our round and we're just going to line to one side, all the same sides. And we can actually give it just a couple of details in there, just a couple of so notice I'm on my toe. If I was not on my toe, it would be um, super flat and um, not pretty. And then turn your project so that it makes sense for you. But that gives that just a little bit of that detail. Then I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna pick up some of this bright yellow And then this is a different load. So that was with water. This is gonna be just dry and flat. A good round brush will actually make an excellent flat brush. So when I push it down flat on my palette, it makes it into a flat brush. When I load it with water, it keeps it and makes it not flat. It makes it like a round where it will relieve the water out of it as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna do what we call dry brushing here. Pick up some more paint. And that's gonna just pop that color. Just streaks of color. It's almost what we were doing over here um, without the liquid on the board. And I'll probably do one more pass at this just to build that color. And then I could also mix with a little bit of that cream on the opposite side and just give it that highlight piece. Uh, so much fun. Okay, we're gonna get that dry. And I think I'm gonna let that naturally dry. 
There's one thing on this board that I'm not liking, and it is just naturally how my pattern of my cowhide landed. I've got this halo effect in here, so I wanna take care of that right now. I'm gonna take just a, a glazing brush, a thin brush, um, something like that, and I'm gonna take the hide color that we did all the coloring with, which, which was that oxide red and the brown. And I'm just gonna sneak in and tint that area. It's just standing out and being awkward. So that got rid of that halo and I think that looks so much better. And so let's move on to the opposite side and then we'll tuck in that little bit of greenery up there. That looks so cute. All right, so actually I need to move it down here because I want to place it upside right and then I want to um, flip it over to paint it. All right, what are we doing down here? You can flip your stencil over, just maybe something that I will do. Could do it this way and just make it heavier, like lots more of the yellow. And then I wanna guide that leaf into hugging that edge. So I think I may like this one better because it hugs more naturally. And I'm imagining my yellow. I'm not liking this little berry bit, so I am just gonna tuck a piece of tape right there. just to keep him out of my way. And then we'll tape over here. Tape over here. Okay, so we'll go backwards. We'll do the same exact thing that we did before. Okay, so if I want the paint to pop off, I won't over blend it. This will give me some texture. And so I'm not pushing on it, I'm just tapping down. And that'll give it a little bit of seed-like texture. I feel like that's better. Ooh. This is an example of a dome brush. I believe that's still paint in there. That's gray paint. So if you have paint in your brush, you can take your rubbing alcohol. Let's come over here. Put that on your palette. <laughs> that's hysterical. Okay, you could also soak it a little bit, but you can see what's happening right here is that is loosening the paint and now I can move that brush around. So I'm gonna have to work at this to clean it, but that is how you can get the paint loosened up to get it started. Um, rubbing alcohol will take paint out of a lot of things. Okay, so that's that. Let's find a brush that will work. Aha, nice. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get that greenery done. So I used alcohol on this towel. I'm gonna throw that away because I'm uncertain where the alcohol and where the water is. So I don't wanna mix that. Okay, so we'll go here. We've got that dark color under there, so we want to kind of get rid of that and neutralize it. And now I want to be softer out here where it's light, because that was a problem that I struggled with over here, and I had to lighten it. So I'm just going to fade that. But I am going to stipple back near the stem to cover. It's like using makeup.
Okay, and now we'll go in and we'll neutralize with that green. And then we're just gonna swirl one more masker. Okay, we'll take that away and then we'll peek. Oh yeah, so see I didn't have to work nearly as hard at that because I pulled myself back on the color placement into the water. And now let's do our yellow. I love the nose part of that multi-masker for round things. That really just lays nicely right in something round and we'll use that sunny gold. Now we go back and look for anything that are big streaks of color and we mask those. They'll just be distracting. Okay. Same thing as before. We get, and now we have the same thing going on here. We've got a halo effect, but then we have a really dark effect. And so that's super interesting. So I'm just gonna get into a smallish brush. I'm gonna pick up a mix of the red, the brown, and a cream. And I wanna just back that color up just a little bit. I don't want it white and I don't want it black. Because in a real flower, you would never see the background because the flower is going to be like, unless it's just super petally, and then you would see the background. But this is right near the core, and that's usually where you have a lot of weight. But then I don't really like all of this white space here either. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that color. Just going to flick some. You could almost finger paint this in just so that you're not getting the halo look. And I'm still not satisfied with that one because it looks so much different than everybody else. Okay. I think when we get it based and do the things, I think it's going to be okay. Um, these finer brushes, you want to flick off the paint and you want to pinch out the water. Never leave these on their nose. The dome brushes you can leave on their nose in water for a week and it's not going to kill them. Um, but you don't want to do that with your finer brushes. Okay, so we're going to get into our brown with our water. And then we'll go give them the, notice I'm pulling out from the middle. Um, I'm gonna not make them quite so pinwheely. They're getting a little pinwheel looking to me. And notice here, my brush didn't touch any part of that flower, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can just be kind of loose with this technique. And now we'll brighten them up. Same brush. Oh yeah, I really like that, that's cute. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell because we have so many videos that we put out all the time and we just want you to have so much fun doing DIY painting um, and we want to share.
So here we go. We're going to brighten this guy up. And now with a little bit of that cream color, Okay, step back, take a look. I like the weight here, I like the weight there. We need to bring just one or two more little clumps over here. I think I'm gonna stick with that. to our green and I think it just, just might need a scumble of green. Just a little dab will do you. There's one masker. I think we'll leave him behind that petal. And then we'll bring this other guy up behind that petal. And then we'll see, yeah, that just connects that nicely. Okay, so now our next job is to band. Are you ready? Let's get the band back together. Pull our tape. Oh, that looks so good. So we're gonna use a banding stencil. The banding stencil comes in a small size um, because it is floppy when you get going with it. So we want to be sure that it's not super floppy and I don't want a lot of bridges. So we keep it small to keep it maintainable, easy to manage. And then we're going to band these lines using brown. And then I'm going to use the second one in. So it's thick enough, but not too thick. We want to be sure not to walk. You want to keep a good line. I'm going to go ahead and tape this before I get that line. It'll start carrying on if, um, if you don't have tape to secure it. So by putting the tape on now, once I place it and I like the placement, it'll stay. Okay, so that's the band we're using. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint a really straight line using a paintbrush, but it's almost impossible. And then you can tape it, but when you tape, it tends to bleed under your tape and then your tape tends to pull up its edges. It's actually just a mess. So it's much easier to go ahead and use a banding stencil. Um, we invented these, um, I don't know, probably five years ago, something like that. And they've just been priceless. So we're gonna go into our brown, our dome brush, paint on my fingers. And I did what you're not supposed to do. I always do this, um, like almost every single time. Don't go right to the edge, like end. I'm gonna pretend like this is my edge. End right in front of it because it'll make it easier to connect the bands. Okay, so get that done. Lift that up, and now we have a perfect band. I always wipe my fingers on that to make sure I don't have any paint that's blood under there. And see that really straight line? That's what we're trying to avoid. So by ending a little bit early, it makes it not hard to mask that silly one strong band. So I'll tap to fade and then scumble along. So you can fix it, it just makes it harder. So don't go to the edge. And lift. Look at how fabulous that is. So amazing. Make sure you layer over just a little bit. Really pay attention to where your line is. fast, it's quick, it's easy, it doesn't use a lot of tape. Amazing. 
Ta-da. Man. Who knew you could paint such a straight line? And that is that. And then we repeat on the other side. All right, next we get to decide what we want to say. We can say hello, we can say blessed. On studior12.com we have surfaces, we have cutout letters, we have embellishments, we have all the things. We don't just have stencils, we have all the things. Um, brushes, tools. Is that too big? It's, oh, it's a little bit big. We can gather though gathers fun. And this does have a fall feel, so I think we'll gather today. All right, so how do we paint these cutout letters? They are interesting. <laughs> so if you use a paintbrush, you're going to glom the paint all around, and that makes it super, I don't know, you have to futz and fix and do all the things. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that you just have a clean application of paint right when you begin. My favorite thing for doing that is this ink sweeper. For skinny things, for fatter things, you wanna use the jumbo dauber. But for the ink sweeper, I can just load just a little bit of paint right there and tap, 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 tap right there. I don't have to worry about the whole thing being loaded with paint. So we're gonna go into, and I think I had done this in a little bit of a brighter green, and this is gonna be too darn bright but it's a super like Irish green. So I'm gonna load with my dark paint first and blend it in. So now I have a base. Then I'm gonna load into that green and the base plus the green is going to make it be a different color. Now I'm going to load, eh, I'm gonna mix them. Trying to be all fancy schmancy here. And then you blot on your paper towel just to make sure all of your excess paint is over there. And you come over here, and I'm just evenly basing this. Now, when I need just that little nose done, I'm gonna go over here, and just I'm tipping it forward, just so I don't get a bunch of bleeding over the edges. It's all about controlling your paint. And we need a little bit more of the dark. So we'll go here. I blotted off way too much. This is such an easy technique. Now you do want to be careful with these letters. They can break. They're, they're heavy, not heavy like heavy, but they're um, thick and they, they do all the right things. If, if you apply pressure to them, you can break them. So you want to be gentle with them. And then once you get them glued onto your board, the board will support the letters and then they won't have a problem. But while they're like this, it's super easy to like flex them and you can do a thing. So, but they're so cool. The cutouts are amazing. And the 3D thing mm, just really gives some depth.
Okay, my letters are green. Let's take a look at them on my board. Be careful not to nudge the green paint all over your board. Oh, and I really do like that. That's lovely. So I was gonna suggest that we do a fade. Um, I don't think we need it whatsoever. I think this looks really perfect. So I am going to use some wood glue, attach this to my board, and I'll use my drill press over there. I'll drill some holes, I'll put a hanger, and hang it at my house and enjoy this project. I hope you guys had fun. We'll see you in the next video.